So today we are going to jump on to the Mountain West Mountain Division, or excuse me, the Mountain West West Division. We've already done the Mountain. But we have got a lot to talk about with the MWC. Of course, last season Utah State beat San Diego State in the MWC title game. We've already talked about Utah State. And now we are going to talk about the other side. Chris, before we jump into it, initial impressions or your thoughts on the Mountain West West Division. Uh, overall, I think it's better than the other side. And, uh, yeah, I think some of these teams got a chance to be good. Uh, I think some of them scheduled really smartly also. I I tend to agree. I tend to agree. We'll go on and dive into the first one here, and that would be the San Diego State Aztecs. And, of course, coached by Brady Hoke. I believe this is the third season with Hoke at the Realm. Uh, he has done a... A pretty good job. Uh, excuse me, the helm and not the realm. What the, what the hell am I talking about? Um, so last season, twelve and two, pretty damn good record. Uh, pretty none good. of that. None of that was from the offense, Chris. Like, <laughs> if well, they could get the offense rolling. With Brady Hoke. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. Um, it, that defense is still rolling right along, even after Rocky Long left. Uh, you know, they are they are rolling. They do have some massive losses on the roster, though. Defensive end Cam Thomas. Uh, tight end Daniel Bellinger, the punter Matt Areza, of course, punt god. Uh, then, of course, you got you know both guards that were gone. Uh, the running back Greg Bell, cornerback Taylor Hawkins, um, guard Chris Martinez, etc. Uh, defense is going to be replacing some people, but they've also got some really, really good guys coming back. Uh, let's talk first about the offense. You have got to find a way to open this offense. I mean, this is just at what what they have done over and over again is not going to work. Uh, they were number 104 in PPA per drive, and that's just not going to win championships. Uh, the Virginia Tech transfer quarterback, Braxton Burmeister, is going to take over the offense. They are losing three starting linemen. They are losing three of their top four receivers, and they're losing the running back, Greg Bell. But with as bad as the offense was last year, I don't know that losing those guys necessarily matters. Of course, I say that, and it's preseason, but you, you get the point. Uh, the offensive line transfers that they brought in, they average six foot four and three hundred and thirty pounds. Now they are replacing three starters, like I mentioned, but I don't think size is going to be an issue. The offense coordinator Jeff Heklinski uh, is is likely still going to lean on the run here, but if they can find a way to open up this offense at all, that is going to help out the defense quite a bit. Uh, moving over to the defense, uh, you know it's been the bedrock of the program for a long time. That's likely not going to change this season. Uh, they have finished top twenty one in scoring defense. Six of the last seven years. Uh, the question here, of course, is going to be who replaces Cam Thomas. He had 27 tackles for loss last year. Uh, there are, again, still a bunch of studs on the defense. You got Keyshawn Banks, defensive end, linebacker Caden McDonald. Um, you got the safety, Patrick McMorris. Like you, you have got some real studs on this roster. Uh, going to give me your initial impressions on this. Uh, this. This team looks like they are going to compete again this year. Yep, I agree with that completely. Uh, I think this team is going to be really good, probably the, the premier team in this conference, uh, in my opinion. Um, they lost some guys, but I think defensive guys, they've just been – it's just a system that they've been running for a long time, and, and, and they seem to know what they're doing there. Offensively, I do not believe it's possible for them to be worse. And so <laughs> I think with a, with a power five talent quarterback coming um, in transfer – uh, that should help them take a big step forward. Got a lot of transfer, in, and you brought up the, the offensive line revamping. I like this team. I think they're going to be really good. Now, schedule is a little bit different, okay? They got a couple of big power five teams on there. I don't think they'll lose to all of them, but I think they might. And, um, you know, I've got them not hitting that double-digit mark again, but I think safely eight and four wouldn't shock me if they were nine and, and then uh, three. That's a, I've got eight and four on this team. Um you mentioned the offense. Uh, they were number 126 in explosive play rate uh, via their passing game last year. It don't get much they, worse they, than they that. Don't, but, but they don't do that, though. Like, Agreed. This is one of those things. We talked about this with another team not too long ago. I don't remember when. It, it was like, Utah State. Like, yeah. Like, yeah Utah State doesn't run the ball. Yeah, with, with the run the ball. Like, you can't say, well, well they're just really bad. at the, Yeah, but if they're really good at all the other things and that's just something they don't do, then, you know. Like, at what point in time are we going to realize they're winning ball games in spite of that, and they don't care about that? Well, I think that, see, if 
Utah State can at least say, you know, we're really good at throwing the football, so we don't worry about the we don't worry about running it, right? With San Diego State, they don't run the ball well either. Like they were number ninety eight in rushing success rate. Um, you, like <laughs> you're right, but the problem is, but the problem is, Gary, is if you can't throw the ball well, that destroys your defense because you're going to turn the ball over. If you can't run the ball well, that doesn't hurt your defense at all. It eats up clock. It has you on the sidelines just as long as you would be um, normally. So, like, it doesn't – like, not a lot changes on the thing that you're really good at. True, true. If you try to throw the ball and you suck at throwing the ball, you're going to crush that great defense of yours. Yeah, no, you you are not wrong. You are not wrong. Uh, as we said, the defense is still going to be strong, even with losing Cam Thomas. Uh, the question – is can Brady Hoke adapt and evolve a little bit? Uh, Even if he doesn't, this is still going to be a really good team. I've got them 8-4. and I've got them losing to Arizona and Utah. Got them losing at Boise, and I've got them losing at Fresno State. Uh, Could we see them beating any of those teams? Absolutely. They beat Utah last year. I I, I actually, the reason I said 9-3 and and, and is is because I I think there's a really good chance they they might beat Arizona. Oh, absolutely. (laughs) Absolutely. I I think they're favorite. I I think they're a better team than Arizona. Uh, the early lines, if I'm not mistaken, oh, are they favored? I think, yeah, I think they're favored over Arizona in the uh, in the early lines. Um, I'm gonna look at FanDuel right quick and see. Uh, but look, looking at this team, like if they beat Fresno on the road, uh, would not shock me. If they beat Boise even on the road, would not shock me. And they did beat Utah last year. Granted, the game was at home, uh, so I, you know, this none of it would surprise me whatsoever. So I, I think uh, possibly. Let's see. Da, da, da. Uh, FanDuel does not have it listed. So, um, but yeah, I, I think uh, I think that they're favored by like just a few points. Um, yeah, well, and they play on the road, is, so that doesn't surprise me. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's not like Arizona's got some wild home crowd. No, no, absolutely not. Yeah. Uh, it's the first week of the season, and San Diego State. You're not, you're not walking into the big house there, okay? San Diego State is favored by five. And they're not playing at Arizona. They play Arizona at home. And, yeah, favored by five with a total of 50 and a half. That's, uh, that's per oh, circuit. Yeah. So, yeah, it wouldn't shock me if they beat Arizona. Uh, I do think Arizona's going to be uh, drastically improved better. this year. We, we think they're going to be better, but they got a long way to improve before they're better than good uh, G5 teams, right? I, I think you're right. I think you're right on that. All right, let's uh, – They were pretty far down that, down that rabbit hole. Back. Oh, big time. Big time. All right, let's uh, let's move into the Fresno State Bulldogs. And, of course, taking over Fresno State this year, Jeff Tedford. He is back. Uh, he retired uh, due to medical issues not that long ago. And Kalen DeBoer took over, ran the ship for two years, got him to 9-3, and three, and then uh, won a bowl game last year, so 10-3. And three. And, uh, and now Tedford is back. Kalen DeBoer has, uh, has moved on over. He is uh, coaching at Washington now, but he does leave behind uh, quarterback Jake Hayner, running back Jordan Mims, wide receiver Jalen Cropper. Uh, the defense is pretty good. Like if you if you talked about this team last year, you probably wouldn't have talked much about the defense. But man, with guys like uh, Evan Williams, the safety, and the defensive end David Perales, um, I mean they, they are they're going to be pretty good on defense again. I think. Uh, even with that, you know, they are missing defensive end Aaron Mosby and the cornerback Darren Bland, but uh, but they, I think they're going to be pretty good. Like this, this looks like a fun team. Uh, they're losing the running back Ronnie Rivers, uh, wide receiver Kirik Wheatfall, uh, and then of course the right tackle. Let's uh, let's let's hit on the offense first here. DeBoer left, but he was the OC at Fresno under Tedford, uh, and then of course with Tedford back, I would imagine having Hayner back. Everything's going to look the same. Yeah, they're going to look the same. They got a ton of playmakers and a pretty good offensive line here. The explosive play rate could possibly stand to be improved. Uh, they were number eighty-one uh, in explosive plays on offense. It, it may they might get uh, they might get better at that having Jordan Mims be the premier back instead of Ronnie Rivers. Um, He's just like he's a utility back. He's really, really good. And can the offensive line fix their, you know, rushing success rate? I mean, they were number 50 last year. It, it's still pretty good. Uh, but they were number eight in passing success rate. So if Hayner is dealing, I mean, why mess with it, right? Why mess with it? Uh, offense is pretty good, and I would imagine it will continue to be under Tedford. Uh, on the defense, it didn't feel great, like I said, but 
man, they were number 18 in defensive PPA per drive last year, and that is elite. Like, they are really good. Uh, they need to limit the explosive play rate on this side. Uh, they were number 96. They they gave up a ton of explosive plays, uh, you know, per the number of plays that they actually ran. Uh, the linebacker and the secondary uh, positions are loaded, absolutely loaded with talent. Defensive line lost four of the six players that got at least 225 snaps. But they do have Stanford defensive end Joshua Picola coming in as a transfer. And then, of course, like I mentioned, uh, the defensive end Perales is a star. Um Man, give me give me your ideas here. Like I, I'm curious uh, your uh, your initial impressions. Yeah, almost the yin to the yang of of um, San Diego State for these first two teams got yes. them eight and four as well. And I uh, I think it's going to be uh, good offense, improved defense, um, and uh, well maybe not improved because they were pretty damn good in some some areas. I, I just think they're going to I don't know I think they're going to be better. Um, and, and yeah, I like, I like this team. I like that they kept most everybody around, you know, normally when a coach, a G5 coach leaves for a P5 job, you know, their first instinct is to think, well, I've got a bunch of studs at the place I'm at now. They got me the job. Let's bring a bunch of them on. Um, and it usually doesn't work out well because just because you're a great G5 player doesn't mean you're a monster uh, P5 player. True. And uh, and so I think it was smart for either of these guys to stay where they were at and or for him to not bring them over to the Pac-12. But, I, of course, A, I'd rather live in, you know, uh, Fresno than, than live in Seattle right now. So I, I agree. I agree. Um, so, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I think if you're talking about where I got to live and get to play football, give me, give me, uh, give me Fresno uh, over that. Um, and uh, so, anyway, no, I, I like this team. I think Tedford's going to be just fine. And uh, and they're gonna they're gonna win a lot of ball games. I think their schedule sets up absolutely brilliantly. Like it, this is, it, you could not have asked. Are for you it. thinking double digits? I am think I've got them at ten and two. Ooh, okay. Yeah, I think the schedule is brilliant, and and that's with them starting one and two. Now, would it shock me if yeah. they go nine and three, eight and four? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Uh, my keys to the season here is let Hainer cook. Don't change the offense that ran last season much. Develop the offensive line because the rushing PPA was number 111 last season. Their success rate was good, uh, but their predicted points added was was not great. Um, develop the defensive line quickly. Make sure and keep the havoc rate up. They were number 28 in the FBS last season in havoc rate. Uh, if you can find a way to limit explosive passes, that would certainly help. Uh, the secondary you know, is it looks a little more stacked this year than it did last season. They were number 117 in explosive passes uh, allowed last year. So well, you want to improve that. So my, my thought on this is, is so on this side of, of the football, on this side of the conference, I guess I should say, um, styles make fights. And the, and the team I think that you're going to be matched up against for this division, I believe, is San Diego State. And if you're going to be weak anywhere, and that's your biggest opponent, you want to be weak in the secondary because that's not a threat for them. Exactly. So – so that's that's why that's why I I, I, I you know I, I do like Fresno and I kind of made that a coin flip game. Uh, the reason I've got I've got the other team San Diego is uh, at, at maybe nine and, and but definitely eight is because I, I I don't know that they win this game. This is the coin flip game for both of them. Well, this the San Diego State game is in Fresno this year. Uh, listen to the way that the schedule shapes up. All right, you got Cal Poly. And then you've got Oregon State and at USC. Now I could I've got them losing both of those, but then yeah, you've I got because I think Oregon State's much much improved. Yes, agreed. So starting off one and two, and then you've got a bye week. You play at UConn. They've got six away games, but the away games uh, with with USC being one of them, obviously that hurts. Probably going to lose that one. You got at UConn, then at Boise, which I've got them winning that game. They could certainly lose it. Uh, but after that, you've got San Jose State at home, at New Mexico, San Diego State at home, Hawaii at home, at UNLV, at Nevada, and Wyoming. Your away games are USC, UConn, Boise, New Mexico, UNLV, and Nevada. Like yeah, I, but could, you're just not sweet. You're just not sweeping at home. Like you, this is where you and I always have this conversation. I don't chalk up W's because of home home and away games. I just don't. I, it, it never seems to work out that way. Oh, agreed, it agreed. Just doesn't. But I, I look at it as the ones that they're playing at home don't necessarily scare me a lot either. 
Like San Jose State could be pretty good, maybe. Uh, well, but they're yeah, losing a bunch too. So the, the argument is Fresno State and San Diego, uh, and San Jose State. Like those are the two teams that are going to challenge them, right? We agree on that, right? Well, like uh, we're talking what San Diego State and do we think San Jose State's going to compete? Well, in comparison to Nevada, I do. Well, most certainly, right? That's that's what I'm saying. Okay. They get New Mexico, so, like, UNLV, so, and Nevada. This, so, so on this side of the ball, on this side of the division. They've got one real threat and one possible threat in yeah. those two teams. All right? But just because you get those two threats at home doesn't mean we can just talk that up to a W. I no, just, no, you're right. I, that's why I call them coin flip games. I do think they're better than San Jose State. That's why I have them beating them. But I don't, I'm not just giving them the win at Fresno, and I'm not just giving Fresno – I mean San Diego, and I'm not just giving San Diego that win. Agreed. So. Absolutely agreed. Uh, but to, to say that the schedule did not set up well – uh, would be a farce, I think. This schedule no, it does. is. I mean, yeah. I started this with some of these teams have a have, have scheduled very nicely. Oh yes, so. oh yes, they they definitely did. Uh, let's see. Let's move on. Let's go ahead and jump into the next one, the Nevada Wolfpack. And and some people say that you pronounce this Nevada, uh, but we live in Mississippi, so we're going to say Nevada. That's <laughs> that's the way this is going to go. Um, the Wolfpack, of course. That, I mean, they, they lost basically everybody that really mattered. Um, everybody that mattered. Yeah. Uh, Ken Wilson. Everybody that mattered. <laughs> a, yeah. It, well, I mean, I, so I put down uh, quarterback Carson Strong, wide receiver Romeo Dabbs, uh, tight end Cole Turner, and then I put head coach Jay Norvell was one of the biggest losses on the roster. Uh, yep. And then I put basically everybody. They lost. Probably the biggest ro- loss. Oh, yes. Norvell, My right? gosh. They lost. Uh, eighty five hundred plus snaps to graduation or the draft, and then they lost another three thousand snaps to transfer. They are number one thirty in returning production this year. Number one thirty one on offense. Number one thirty on defense. Um, they went eight and five last year. Their post game win expectancy record last year was six point four seven and five point five three. So you're really looking at about a six and six team that went, uh, you know, eight and five instead. Right, six and six in the regular season, and they ended up going eight and four. Uh, I mean, their their roster strength, like, is a little better on offense because of some of the transfers that they brought in. They uh, let's let's talk about the offense first. Uh, Shane Illingworth, the quarterback from Oklahoma State, the backup, he is going to be the starting quarterback for first time offensive coordinator Derek Sage. Uh, Sage has been in Nevada doing all kinds of things. Uh, he coached under. Chris Alt, he coached under Mike Leach at Washington State. Uh, so you would imagine that you've got an idea of what he what he looks like, right? Um, Arizona wide receiver B.J. Castile should pair well with Jamal Ball and the running back Toa Tau. Ta- Tao, I, I don't even know how to say this name. I've, I've tried it a thousand times. Uh, he was all Mountain West last year, and he did come back at running back. Uh, even if there's not a lot of offensive line help, he's one of those guys that can make people miss. So... We'll move over to the defense here. Uh, the defensive tackle, Dom Peterson, he's a stud, but there's not a lot else on the defensive line. The linebacker, Josiah Bradley, is good at linebacker, but everything else is wait and see. Like, you got a few key pieces that could be good. And then other than that, yeah, it's just we'll, we'll see what we get. Uh, there are four players with more than 300 snaps returning in the secondary. That's pretty good. They were number 62 in defensive passing success rate allowed. Uh, they've got seven players that had over 150 snaps in the secondary, but they did lose both starting cornerbacks, so that's another wait-and-see situation there. Uh, give me your thoughts on on Nevada and the Wolfpack and uh, and what you think they'll be this year. Uh, the Wolfpack is very much a all-hopes and future uh, situation. I don't think it's going to be good. I think they're going to struggle. I think, thank God, that they get to play New Mexico and UNLV and some of these other schools. I've got Nevada at five and seven. I and I have, think I was being generous. I think you were as well. I have them at three and nine. Three okay. and nine. I was I felt like and I'll tell you this. I, I think all right, so on honest question here then from you, and we're maybe cats out of the bag for for the next team. Um where are we at with UNLV and is Nevada falling behind them? I think they 
they are for a this pre, year. Pre damn, they're pretty damn close. If they're not, yes. what, rather they're better than them or worse than them, the argument can be made that they're they're close enough to where both those teams ain't anything you want to tell you mom about. I mean, I've got them losing uh, the last game of the year at UNLV. Yeah, yeah, well, but you so, got that because of that UNLV. Uh, no, not so much. Uh, I just, I, I think, I think UNLV is okay. going to be slightly improved. They, they really, that, that might be true, Gary. And yeah. you might really think that, but your history of how you've done things, like, I, I just, I think if it was at Nevada and you saw it with fresh eyes and we never had this conversation, you'd give that nod to Nevada. Uh, you might be right about that. You might be right. So, I, so. but I will tell you this, I do have them Which losing that. Game. doesn't matter. So, yeah. Uh, they do. Yeah, I've got. A, I had a hard time with them in in, in, in UNLV. I, I basically had both of them winning four <laughs> games, and I kind of said, "Okay, one of them might get to five, one of them might be at three. But I think they're both bad. I, I can certainly agree with that. My my keys to the season here: um, Ken Wilson uh, has not been an OC or a DC or anything. He's been a position guy, uh, but he did coach under Chris Alt, Mike Leach, and Mario Cristobal. But this is a big leech or a big leap to yeah. uh, to being a head coach. Yeah. That's right. So that's um, right. key another key here: establish chemistry, get the team on the same page early. There are three winnable games right out of the gate. They can they can play at New Mexico State, Texas State, and Incarnate Word. You get those three, you start to gain a little uh, confidence and whatnot. Figure out some right. of the stuff that you got. Maybe three and nine or four and eight or whatever uh, is something that can be avoided, but. Uh, I've got here last, you know, looking at last year's numbers, like none of them matter. Uh, you got to get Shane Illingworth comfortable because behind him is Nate Cox, who was decent as a backup, but uh, he got like 40 something snaps last year and was okay. But like, eh, you know what you got with Illingworth, I think. Um, and so I would get him comfortable. Uh, It's going to be a rough stretch, uh, after those first three games. You got at Iowa, at Air Force, Colorado State, at Hawaii, San Diego State, at San Jose State, Boise, Fresno, and at UNLV. Like, that is a rough stretch for anybody that wasn't replacing basically the entire roster. The entire roster and staff. Right. And having a first year head coach that's never even been a coordinator. Like, yes, yes. All of these things combined to being really ugly. Really ugly. Now, let's say something positive here. Uh, there's a coach in the SEC that did really well last year that had never been a coordinator either, and that would be Sam Pittman. So maybe you can establish the culture early and get something rolling here, but it it don't look good. I'll certainly say that. Oh. <laughs> it really don't look good. He, the difference between Sam followed a – now, and I love Sam, and I'm not going to besmirch him, not one iota. But the difference between this and Sam is Sam has – Two OCs and DCs, two coordinators that are head coach material. Also. Oh, most certainly. They they basically have three guys on that team that could run their own program, and that helps. Now that you, helps a lot. You have so, got that right. I love I love Sam, and I love what he is doing. And I, I ain't gonna say one bad thing about him, but to try to say, well, you know, coaches who've never been coordinators before have succeeded in the past. Well, then you better go get other guys that have been head coaches. To be on your staff, agreed. Uh, agreed. Because somebody's going to, have to pick up the slack. This shit ain't magic. It ain't going to happen overnight. You're not wrong. You are not wrong. The San Jose State Spartans are next, and of course, anybody that's watched this show long enough knows how much we appreciate Brent Brennan. Uh, went five and seven last year, uh, but the post game win expectancy numbers paint a different story. Uh, three and a half wins was their post-game win expectancy, and they ended up winning five. Uh, now, you can say that that's coaching, that they were able to win some games that they probably should not have, but it definitely doesn't set them up well for this year. Uh, they lost quarterback Nick Starkle, who was only able to play in seven games last year, so that, that definitely did not help. Uh, running back Tyler Nevins is gone. The left tackle, Jack Snyder, uh, who was really good, he's gone. Safety, Jay Leonard, and the tight end, Derek Deese Jr., who was just a monster, uh, he is gone as well. But they do return a lot on a defense that was pretty good. Um, they were number 20 in the country in returning defensive production, number 64 on offense. Uh, the defense, as far as roster strength goes, uh, number 45 in the country. Like, that is that is P5 level. Like, defense was really good. Uh, they were number 34 in defensive PPA per drive. 
But uh, but let's start off with the offensive coordinator. Uh, coordin- excuse me, the offensive side of the ball. The OC Kevin McGiven uh, enters his fifth season here. The offense was just a disaster last year. After being so good in 2020 in that COVID season, uh, they just had a ton of turnovers, negative plays. Uh, but they did get a transfer in here, and that transfer was quarterback uh, Shevin Cordero from Hawaii. Um, can that cornerback or that quarterback and the wide receivers that came over from Nevada can those improve the numbers that they had on offense? They were number one hundred nine in passing success rate last year, number one seventeen in offensive PPA per drive. Like that is brutally bad. Um, Starkle he was injured in week four. He missed five games. Uh, they started uh, well. He started the last three games of the season. They were all losses. Like the numbers were not good. He never came back fully healthy. It didn't look like. Uh, as far as the defense, like I said, loads of experience and upside on all three levels here. Defensive end, uh, Fehoko, and the linebacker, Kyle Harmon. Um, and then, of course, cornerback, Nehemia Shelton. Uh, and then you got safety trade Jenkins. These are all guys that, that could be NFL draft picks. Secondary yeah, was number... Yeah, these are, yeah, these they are, are Sunday awesome. guys, man. Oh, 100%. Could, could, could be Sunday guys. Some oh, yeah. Uh, secondary was number 75 in pass uh, success rate allowed. They returned two cornerbacks with 500 plus snaps and of course the uh, the safety Jenkins returns and they did bring up a transfer USC transfer Chase Williams who he may end up being the most talented guy in the secondary. Uh give me give me your record here. What what are you looking at for this team? So I like this team I think better than you do. I I've, I've got them seven I got them flipping their their record from last year. I've got them 7 and 5. I have them 6 and 6. Okay. I do like I was wondering. Them. I was wondering if you were five and seven still, or if you were giving them a bump. Oh, I'm giving them a bump, and I could I could see them yeah. seven and five for sure. Um, my losses here, I've got them losing to Auburn. I've got them losing to Western Michigan, which they could easily win that game. I've got them losing say, to that's, that's a game I think it's a coin flip. Oh yeah, uh, at Wyoming, I've got them losing that one. Uh, at Fresno, at San Diego State, and at Utah State. I've got those as losses. Their road schedule is not forgiving. I, I will certainly say that. Nope. Um, they definitely have, I think, the toughest schedule on uh, like this side of the bracket. Yes. Maybe I'm wrong on that. Maybe I'm wrong on that, but I, I think they're pretty tough. That's I I I would tend to agree with you. Uh, going to Auburn and then bringing Western Michigan in, like that's yeah. that's rough. But Western Michigan. So all of them play a P five school that we think they're probably going to lose to. It, most of them play another G5 school that's not a Mountain West team that I kind of favor so far in the in, in, in doing this in this division, I kind of favor all the Mountain West teams over all the other divisional teams that they play. This is the one where I think you're right. I don't know that I can favor them over Western Michigan. Yeah, that's I, even with the game at home, I just – Western Michigan, I, I trust uh, Tim Lester. I trust what he does. So They're tough. Yeah, that's a tough They're football tough. team. I mean, that's, that's a tough – that's a, yeah, we talk about this Mac, you know, football. These are these are tough kids, man. But I think <laughs> it's a not wrong. Game. You are not wrong. Uh, my keys to the season here: find a way to stop turning the ball over on offense. They were number one twenty-seven in turnover margin last year. Uh, they got to try and find some kind of consistency on that side of the ball. And then I put: they cannot lean on the defense for everything. Uh, I put in here: defense has some studs, transfers, and youngsters need to step up quickly. And then I put uh, they went four and two in one score games last year and still went five and seven uh, without a steady offense that could easily regress this year. Uh, they've got to score more points this season. So I've, I've got them at six and six. I don't think they're going to go four and two in one score games again. Like I'm sure that will probably regress to about three and three. Uh, but I think that the defense is good enough, and with Cordero uh, at quarterback, and then of course the uh, the wide receivers Cook and Lockhart. Um, I think that those guys are are really good. So I've got them at 6-6. Six and six. Um, Not bad. Not bad. And Chris just dropped out, and we're going to let him jump back in here. But, uh, but yes, so so with Nevada, or sorry, San Jose State, I've got them 6-6. Six and six. We've got two more that we're going to try and knock out uh, because I may, have some, I may have some noise in my office here in just a minute. Chris, we got you back. Yeah, I got you back. Sorry, man. I, I think Zoom, once we get close to an hour, just says, I'm done. <laughs> because it's happened It's happened at like the 57-minute mark both times, and, and my, my Wi-Fi is lightning fast right now. 
That's I do wonder about that. Um, I, I, so I, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't, I don't know. either. So I don't either. either way. It's weird that it, the, the time happened at the same time. Two straight times. When it happened last. Well, we, we anyway, will see. I'm here. I got you. What what, what team are we on? Uh, we are moving on to the Hawaii Warriors here. Um, Ooh, let me go in and write my time down. Ugly. Hawaii. Ugly this part. Yeah, this one could get this one could get very interesting. Uh, the Rainbow Warriors. Of course, last year, everybody that paid his attention to college football, if you haven't paid attention in the offseason, first off, we understand. I get it, even though there is no offseason. Uh, Todd Graham was fired in, what, February, I think? Yeah. And they ended up hiring Timmy Chang. And for those longtime viewers of this sport, you will remember him because he would fling the ball all around in June Jones' run-and-shoot offense. It, it was a lot of fun. Uh, this team went six and seven last year, and and then they just had a mass exodus as far as transfers go. Like everybody left this team. Um, Timmy Chang has well, never been a coordinator, and we, had, and, we like, had, and we had some problems in the program. Um, you know, Todd Graham was obviously a complete and utter disaster. Yes. Um, so I mean, it's just a lot of players yeah. said that he uh, he was verbally abusive. And all that, and it's it's just old guard kind of stuff that you got to be able to adapt from. And Graham never did, right? Uh, right. So then they bring in Timmy Chank, who is uh, the the hero that has always been loved by everybody at Hawaii uh, for as long as you can look back. He has not been a coordinator at any level yet, but he is the guy that they have helmed to uh, to maybe try and clean this up. I will I will tell you this. The program is not willing to put in the money right now that you need to right be now. a successful program. Uh, we think this is a stopgap thing, don't we? I do. Uh, do you? I think they're hoping that it can turn into more. I think they're going to give Timmy Chang a lot of leeway. Uh, this They're not just going to fire him after like three years if he doesn't show I think. I think this is like four or five year stretch because they're going to get the stadium redone. Like They're already working on that. Uh, they're they're going to do a lot of different things, but they're they're still trying to nickel and dime this, from what I understand. And I don't know how you can be successful in the Mountain West by nickel and diming your way through it, right? Well, what I was saying is, is I think this is all about the stadium. I think they're not even going to try to focus on competitiveness or anything of that nature until the stadium's done. Yeah. Now, I might be wrong on that, but... I think it's going to be really hard to recruit and to compete at a real level of any substance at all playing in a practice field for several years. Yes. They are playing in front of about 3,000 people. It's not good. I, uh, I, I, will, I, will take, I will take the under on that. They, uh, they will not be playing in front of 3,000 people. It holds 3,000. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, they ain't going to be playing in front of 3,000. They are number 131 in returning production. Dead last in FBS, uh, 25% of their production is back. Um, and that even includes transfers coming in. Like the transfers that they are bringing in are guys that have not played. So right. this could be very interesting. Um, on top of that, uh, you lost 10 starters on offense. You lost seven starters on defense. Uh, you lose Shevin Cordero. You lose uh, big play wide receiver Nick Mardner. You lose stud defensive end Jonah Lualu, who went to Oklahoma. You lose linebacker Darius Mwasau. Uh You lost every kind of playmaker that you got. They went 6-7 and seven last year. They were not bad, right? Uh, nope. Post-game win expectancy nope. was 6.59 and 6.41, so they were right around where they should have been. Uh, maybe should have been 7-6 and six instead, but regardless, uh, it is what it is. This team, you can throw out every number from last year. Like, right. none of it sure. matters. Uh, their projected SP plus record is four and eight, um, which is silly. Now, it, it, sorry, four and nine. Sorry, because they play thirteen games. Um, they bring in. So let's talk about the offense first. Eastern Washington offense, uh, offensive coordinator Ian Shoemaker takes over as the OC, and this is his first FBS job. But if you've paid attention to FCS, Eastern Washington's offenses are a lot of fun. Like they they really move the ball around quite a bit. You got to figure out who's going to be your starting quarterback. You got Joey Yellen from Pitt. You got uh, Can Cameron Cooper uh, from Washington State, who was a backup, and then you got sophomore Braden Shaker, who was a backup at Hawaii. So three guys that have been backups. 
um, are all going to be, you know, vying for this job. And then you're starting from scratch as far as playmakers go. You got running back Dedrick Parson. He's a dual threat playmaker, but you don't have a lot of talent in the receiving core. Um, offensive line at least looks kind of solid. So, you know, maybe maybe that's good, I guess. Uh, as far as the defense, Jacob Yoro is the DC. He was the co-DC in 2020 in Todd Graham's first year. Uh, and he was also a coach with Nick Rolovich. So there's at least a little bit of continuity there, uh, even if there's not with players. Uh, they did bring in seven P5 defensive transfers. Uh, the defense does look decimated other than the transfers that have come in. Uh, again, numbers from last year do not matter. Like it, They were number 61 in defensive PPA per drive, but it, you can't gather that this will be anywhere close to that. Uh, you just got to hope that the chemistry hits with these new guys and that the D.C. Yoro knows what he's doing, who is now on his third Hawaii staff. Uh, give me give me your record here. What, what do you think? I, I think they're 2-10, and 10 and I, I think they're just going to struggle, and I don't know that they'll win two games. I've I've got them three and ten. Um, I've got them beating uh, Nevada at home, but I could easily see them losing that game. The other two, Duquesne and at New Mexico State. Um, I mean, this will tell you we we really don't think highly of New Mexico State. <laughs> no, we're not. Oh we're not, man. Not. Um, I mean, if if they get something ro- like, there's ways I could see this going well because Hawaii has always done pretty well but man if you just look at the roster and look at the schedule like this is this is not a good setup at all um their first three games are Vandy Western Kentucky and at Michigan I I don't see how they win any of those uh even though they've got Vandy and Western Kentucky at home like I just I you know yeah travel to Hawaii is kind of rough but eh, I don't know man they, they brought in 11 P5 transfers. Uh, my keys to the season here, develop chemistry early, hope they pick the right quarterback. Offense is going to need to develop wide receivers early, and they'll luckily have a relatively steady offensive line to lean on. Defense uh, transfer city needs to gel quickly with three relatively tough non-cons to start things off. Like, I've got them 3-10. and 10. Um, you, You've only got them winning two ballgames? Two ballgames. Two and 11. Whew. That is rough. That's a, that's a rough season when you got uh, thirteen games to play instead of <laughs> instead of the normal twelve. Like that extra game is just. Ugh. Uh, they closed the season at San Jose State, by the way. <laughs> so <laughs> just ridiculous, just ridiculous. Um, all right, we'll close out with uh, with UNLV here. Uh, UNLV. That's a this is a tricky one, right? Very tricky. Uh, Marcus I Roy. Him, I got him a little better than I originally thought. That's a, well. So they went two and ten last year. Um, yeah, which was than that. yeah. So they they were two and ten last year. Uh, the post game win expectancy really said they should have been three and nine, but uh, you know they went eight and four against the spread. They were pretty good. They they did really well uh, with two touchdown wins over Hawaii and New Mexico. They scared three uh, Mountain West contenders last year. Yeah. Like they were they were in some ball games that they maybe should not have been in. And it had nothing to do with their offense. Like Marcus Arroyo was the OC at Oregon when um oh my god, what's the quarterback's name? Uh uh the plays for the Chargers. Herbert? Yes, Justin Herbert. Justin he was, Herbert? He was the OC okay. at Oregon for Justin Herbert. Uh which led everybody to think, man, we should probably be betting against Marcus Arroyo. Because if his thing is offense and he couldn't figure out how to use Justin Herbert, then <laughs> how is he going to lead a program? But uh, in this situation here, like let's let's talk about the offense first. Well, they, they're big losses. They lost running back uh, Charles Williams. They lost wide receiver Steve Jenkins, uh, and they lost defensive end Jacoby Windman. Um, let's start off with the offense. Pretty much anything is an improvement. They were number one hundred nine in offensive PPA per drive last year. 121 in rushing success rate, number 110 in passing success rate. But with as few plays as they had on offense, they ended up number nine in the country in offensive explosive play rate. Now, the reason why is because they did not have the ball that much. Like, that's <laughs> that's the biggest thing. So when they did hit big plays, uh, the ratio was thrown off, right? So that's, that's why it looks a little crazy. Um, they, pretty much anything is going to be an improvement on offense. 
they brought in quarterback Harrison Bailey, who was at Tennessee. And Bailey, like, can he beat out Cameron Friel for the job? That's the question. Friel was a freshman last year and won the starting job. Ended up starting, I think, seven games. Uh, they've got three guys that played meaningful snaps last year, and they never really settled on any of them. Like, Friel was the closest thing to settling as they could, but I think Harrison Bailey can beat him out. Uh, the other part is you got to limit the turnovers, and you got to find a playmaker somewhere. They don't have any playmakers on this team, at least from last year. Uh, the wide receiver, Kyle Williams, did show some flashes last year, but he, you know, eh, we'll, we'll see what he ends up doing this year. Uh, as far as the defense, decent against the run. Uh, they were number 30 in defensive rushing success rate allowed. But, man, um, I think that had to do with the fact that everybody could pass on them because they were number 121 in passing success rate allowed. Uh, the front seven looks promising. They need experienced secondary to play above their heads this year. They've got four players with 400-plus snaps back. Uh, you know, give me give me your thoughts on Arroyo's uh, third bunch here. I, I think they're going to be much improved from last year, and I used the word much, uh, I think, correctly. I got them four and eight, Gary. I think this team's going to be better. I think they're still going to be a bad football team, but I think they're going to be better than the seller that they have been. Brother, me and you are in the same boat here. I've got them four and eight. Uh, my four wins are Idaho State, New Mexico, at Hawaii, and Nevada. I think yeah. this is a, and I think they're going to scare some teams that maybe they, you know, you wouldn't expect, right? Uh, you, right. At Utah That's State, right. North Texas, you know, something like that. Uh, could they sneak up and and beat uh, San Jose State? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I I think this is a step in the right direction. Like a, Arroyo, so. like. At some point, like his offense has got to do something, I would imagine. Uh, by the way, big thing about this team, what, yeah, they, they did turn the football over a lot last year, but they were number seven in the country in penalties per game. Really, really good. Like They did not beat themselves a whole lot. They just weren't all that talented. So yeah, That's the mark of a well-coached team. Yeah. So I, I would imagine that they do take another step forward. Uh, the keys to the season here leaned a lot on youth last season. They showed a lot of potential with two touchdown wins over Hawaii and New Mexico. And uh, and like I said, they scared three Mountain West uh, title contenders. They This is still a really long rebuild. Uh, the roster strength still sits at number 122 per the guys over at CFB Winning Edge. Uh, how much do transfers like wide receiver Ricky White from Michigan State and the running back Robbins out of Louisville help? Those guys could absolutely be playmakers, uh, and they could flip that offense around quickly, very quickly. quickly. So uh, as far as returning production goes, number 41 in the country, number 27 in the country on defense. So they got some experienced guys. Like, this this should be a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, again, step in the right direction. It is a step sure. in the right direction. So who uh, who have you got winning the division? Um, I'm, I'm going with San Diego State. I have got... Oh, I've got Fresno State because I've got them undefeated in conference. And so, okay, okay, I could I could see either one of those. I don't think anybody else really competes for the title. I agree, I um, agree completely with that. And so, yeah, I'm. Uh, I, think, I, I think it's a two horse race. There's a world where we've been wrong on this, and the only team that I think can sneak up on them this year and have a surprise year is is uh, the Spartans. I I tend to agree. San Jose State. Uh, I mean. It, Nevada, I've got three and nine. Hawaii, three and ten. UNLV, four and eight. Yeah, like <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm struggling to get those teams to four wins. Not not even to like five hundred. Four wins. Yeah. yeah, you know, and and some of those I think I'm being generous on. So I, I you know, I, I just don't see a world where that's it. This is very top heavy compared to the other side. The other side uh, uh, of the ball, well, I just don't think it's super impressive all the way around. But um, I, I think we got two real good football teams here. I think I think you're right. This is going to be a lot of fun to watch, see what San Diego State ends up doing with their offense, uh, see what Fresno State looks like with a brand-new head coach. So uh, as, as far as experience and whatnot goes, like I think uh, I think you got to tip your hat to San Diego State on that one. But uh, but it's not like Tedford doesn't know what he's doing with uh, a Fresno team. Oh, no. You know? I, 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 I like Tedford, and I, and I like uh, – uh, uh, Brady Hope? Yes, Brady. Uh, and, and I think it's so – I think it's fitting that they're the two best teams in this division because their styles clash so much. I tend to agree. I tend like to they, agree. They, 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 there, there aren't a whole lot of similarities, and they basically contrast one another. You got that right. You got that right. 
Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.